So it's server upgrade time again, and this guy here is getting upgrade, and I'm going to move a few parts around and make them work a bit better. So here's what we have. First thing, this is an Intel Optane Memory 16 gig module. It's going to be used as a ZIL drive, and eh, it's not the best option, but you can get these relatively cheap. They have fairly high endurance. They're relatively fast write, or at least faster than gigabit, which is all I really need here. And, yeah, I've always wanted to play with Optane, so there you go. It performs really well in some tasks, and better than an SSD in most other standard NAND SSD in most other tasks. Here's an H310. I uh, currently have an H200 in it. I wanted to test this guy in it and just hope it works the same, because I want to use the H200 for something else. Uh, 32 gigs of RAM, just adding some more RAM, going to take out... Some other of the 4 gig sticks to use in a backup server with a video is coming up soon or may have already been posted of that. And a few more hard drives. These are 3 tail drives. Well, they aren't all out, but they mostly are, except for one which is a 2 tail. And that 2 tail is going to be swapped pretty soon. I just kind of needed the space now. So let's get into the upgrade. I need to move some stuff off the server because I don't have rails for everything like I should. So this is the inside of my server, um, and we can see a few things. Most of the slots are empty. We're going to do the PCI slots and RAM first. RAM-wise, so um, it's LGA 2011, so it's quad channel with up to two DIMMs per channel per CPU. So now I'm going to be doing the memory upgrades, and because I have to take a stick out of it, because I want to use that for my backup server, which will be coming up soon. I'm going to put it and leave the last slot available. So that's channel D and I think F. Oh, one more note with the boot drive. So, I was running a 240 gig SSD. And I realized pretty quickly, I didn't need an SSD in there at all. I'd be perfectly fine running a standard spinner. And that's what I actually plan on doing. Which is switching it from an SSD to just a standard spinning hard drive in there. Because I have a 250 gig laptop drive I've been using for nothing right now. Might as well just put some hours on it. One more simple step is inserting drives into the hot swap bay. So I'm just going to be putting uh, this 2 terabyte in here temporarily. And then I'll be adding and swapping this guy out for a 3 tail very soon once it arrives. And then I'm going to put in this other 3 tail which is going to stay here permanently and be a main part of the array. And this one's going to stay empty and get swapped out for the 3 terabyte. Because previously in the server I was running that cheap $11 drive from eBay as my ZFS ZIL. And I'll do an update about how it worked, but essentially I killed it after about 7 terabytes of writes. Which is around 500 write cycles, which probably it's either cheap MLC or fairly bad TL or mid-range TLC. And that would feel about right for what it is. And actually not horrible for a really inexpensive drive. Uh, and then a 16 gig drive like that was never built for any amount of endurance. And here's a look at the insides before I go and shove it back in the rack. RAM's been upgraded. We added the M.2 in, in, we added the M.2 Optane drive. And we changed the storage around a little bit. It should be fully functional. I'll connect the display when booting just to be sure that everything's working correctly. And then we'll go fire up and check the software to make sure everything I added is working correctly. Hopefully it should be. Everything seems to be compatible. So now we're going to go check that it's actually working as intended after the upgrade. So the three things they actually changed was the RAM. Um, I could run an MMIM test but I really can't afford for the system to be down. There's no reported errors in the other logs and stuff, and it recognizes all the RAM. RAM's good, I've done other testing on it. I'd be surprised if it's bad. Maybe you should do some more testing, but it's fine. Um, I swapped the hard drive in instead of the SSD as boot drive. I mean, it's booting, and I haven't seen an issue, so that's fine. Next thing I did was add an Intel Optane drive. So, I guess I've cheated and already done a bit of work with it, but if I run LSB OK, I have way too many devices thanks to Z-Balls, but if I run less, you can see I have this um, slash dev slash, where is it? It should be, actually it's probably at the bottom, yeah, NVMe N01, so yep, they work just fine, 13.4 gigs, which is just right, and it works correctly. So, it's a working drive, so I can do a few more testing with it if I want, so let's do that.
So now when it comes to testing SSDs, I know this drive is good, but there's a few things you can do. So you can do a, a quick ddif equals slash dev slash nvme in one of equals slash dev slash null uh, ds equals one m just to make it faster. This is just going to read a ton of data from the drive and dump it into the nothingness abyss. And if there's a read error, it stops. That's what DD does. It stops on read errors. And I'll tell you, since it's a 16 gig drive, this is going to be pretty darn quick. And it's done. It also shows you average speed of 849 megabytes per second, which is about right. Um, this drive can run just fine on PCIe 2. It really doesn't make difference. Next thing you can do is you can run bad blocks. Um, a full read write test is WSV slash dev slash NVMe N1. Normally I don't run this on a drive that I um, know is fine just because it does put extra writes on it, but Optane can handle these writes pretty well. This is running. Let's take a look at some other tests. So if I run LSBOK into less again, I can see all my drives and I can make sure all my other drives are found. Now we're done with bad blocks. Wasn't really necessary, but it did work correctly. So now we can do the same thing with zpool. So I can do zpool add hdd and then you want to do log tell it's going to be a log device and then slash dev slash disk slash by id and then i think it's i think it's the exact name i think it's nvme nvme intel is going to be the name of the drive and it's going to take a second to add it and reconfigure it and basically every type every sync right now is going to go to the intel Optane drive instead of going onto the hard drives. And due to the latency of SSDs and especially Optane, this is gonna be so much faster than any hard drive. So once this finishes updating, which it does, I don't know why it iostat seg farts whenever you add a subtract drive, it seems like it does. It's working correctly. And now you notice there's almost no writes on the main drives in the pools and they're all going to the um, logs. And then it dumps it all in one main write and it really makes, having a log, if you're doing any types of sync, a log drive makes a huge difference. So now it goes to adding the drives into the pool. So I have a pool called um, HDD that I want to add it to. So I'm going to do zpool attach HDD, which is the pool name. Attach is what I want to do. And then we're going to do the device letters. So lsb ok into less again. And you want to make sure these aren't drives that are already used. Um, the one thing you should do, and I'm going to do this too, is we're going to do cd slash dev slash disk slash buy id. These are all the unique IDs of every single drive. And the advantage of using this is this is always the same, no matter what happens to your system. So you never have to worry about these changing, unlike like SDA, it was, can change to SDC next time you boot up. It's just, it just seems to be basically whatever order it detects it. So I'm going to do zpool attach hdd and then we're going to do raid z one so that's the raid level and then we're going to do the drive so i'm just going to have to punch these all in and i'm going to add the st3000 now i'm going to just add the raw drive without using the partitions and it will go in and punch which partitions and it'll go make a partition i don't know exactly why zfs does that but um, it seems to work fine. And now I punched all the drives, so I have a total of four drives here. You have to make sure they're all different and the exact drives that you want. And you can't really undo adding these drives to the pool, so we're gonna run it. And then it's gonna complain that there's already a partition on some drives. I know that. I want to delete the data. So you can override that with a dash F command. And now it's gonna go start formatting. So if we go back to our other page with all the refreshing ZFS info, it should fairly quickly show all the new drives. So now after a little bit, it's done. It shows you the drive. So it shows me 7.25 terabytes. I'm surprised it doesn't complain about mismatched drives, but it's just the smallest of all drives. When I replace this smaller two terabyte drive here with a big one, it'll give me the full 12 terabytes. And it's currently reading and writing to the drive shows no errors in the main pool for the info. It's continuing its script and it's starting to put data on it. It already has 122 megs. I'm gonna be adding that um, three terabyte drive in and replacing the two terabyte. And well, ZFS is not great for expansion in the future as many consumers would want it where you can just add a drive willy nilly of it whatever size. But you can easily expand the Z a RAID Z by slowly replacing it with bigger drives over time. 
So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this 3 terabyte drive into an array of mostly 3 terabytes and one 2 terabyte. That'll let me use the extra um, one terabyte on every single drive. So for example, I have an array of four um, 2 terabyte drives in a RAID Z right now. If I went in there and replaced them all with 8 terabytes one by one, you can make it an 8 terabyte. Is it recommended in the best way? No, it's not exactly what all the consumers want, but you can definitely do it. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can add another, um, just add another um, VDEV to the array. But it's kind of annoying because you just keep adding drives and that can get annoying over time. So now I want to add the drive. So first thing I want to do is make sure the drive actually shows up properly with LSBOK into less because I have a lot of devices. So we're going to see a ton of drives right now and we want to make sure it's the right drive. And this drive to my knowledge has one partition on it and is going to be 2.7 terabytes. Another thing I can do to look at them is I can look at disks by ID and I get all these ugly looking ID numbers but I know Hitachi, if I look at the Hitachi drives, it's not going to be the 2 terabytes which I think have a different code in them somewhere. So they all start with HUA or HUS so if I find a drive that's different I know it's part of it. So looking at the drive numbers, I can look the um, ATA drives, so the ones that start with HUA are the older ones, and my 3 terabyte added is a slightly older model. And then what I can do is I can tell which one I want to add and which one I want to move. So I've already looked at them, got to tell. Make sure you do it correctly, because you can easily screw up your pool. I don't know how much it'll tell you about screwing up your pool, but make sure you don't make the mistake. So then you want to run ZPool, replace the pool name, so it's HUD in this case. And then the disk you want to replace. So slash dev slash disk slash by id. So this is the disk that's already in there that you want to get rid of. So in this case it's ATA Hitachi HUA 20. And then the disk you want to add. So that's slash dev slash disk by id ATA Hitachi HUA and then 30. And then this is going to replace the disks. And it might go and notify you that it has a file system that's already there. Now it says as NTFS, and that's what I was doing the previous testing on this drive with NTFS, so I know it's the right drive as well. So now I did not dash F, so now it's going to force it to a place even though it has an existing file system. It's going to take a second or two. And then if we go look at ZPool status, we're going to tell that it says replacing it. So now there's kind of this virtual drive that's getting replaced and then these two new ones that get their data copied over, which it says it to be slivering. And if I look under the status, it'll show you it's A, has started to scrub on all your data, and B, it's re-slivering the data. And the next thing is if we look at I.O. stat, we can tell the ones that are being re-slivered, the two drives, we can see one's being read, f written f read from the top one, and one's being written to the bottom one. And in a little bit, all the data is going to be synced, and it's going to be completely replaced. And because it's running a full scrub at the same time, as well as doing a re-sliver, this can take quite a while. Okay, so one more step that I forgot about that you had to do is turn on auto-expand. So now, as you can see, I have 10 terabytes available, whereas earlier I only had 8.2. So I did get the extra 3 terabytes, or so and so, because terabyte to terabyte conversion and just ZFS overhead. But, what you have to do is you have to do this, so zpool online dash e, which is the extend, as in the pool name, as in an easy device, so I just gave it the last device I added, and it was happy, it took a second or two and expanded it. And now if we look at ZFS um, pool status, we can see that the um, pool now has 10.5 terabytes available and 337 used. So it did successfully extend and it, which is exactly what I wanted. Now all the drives are set up and the upgrade's working successfully. I haven't had any issues with this upgrade. It's been running. You know, I did it last night. Now it's running. All the features are now useful. And for the upgraded storage place, if I run df-h, I can see in some of my mounted ones, such as the storage one, which is my main one, I have over 8 terabytes available now instead of like 3 last time. So if I go zfs list, it'll also show me things like my main storage one, 8 terabytes available on almost all of these. Thanks for watching this little server upgrade video and subscribe for more videos like this in the future.